Hey, this is Jason Morris with EXP Realty and the Facebook group Real Estate Agents That Really Work. It's October 7th, and I got um, Matt, Matthew Rodriguez on the phone with me. So, so, Matthew, man, how did your – this is week number three we've been doing these calls. So how did your week go this week? What's up, Jason? Um, hey. This week this week was pretty good, um, all, all things considered. Um, obviously, we have the hurricane coming through. I'm probably going to say about half this week is going to be a vacation week, though. So, <laughs> yeah, this has been a tough week. This has been a tough week for me too, man. Uh, you know, this stuff is it's hard to plan for weather like this. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and then in our state, our our governor. I mean, you know, I understand being, uh, you know, you know, being prepared and being cautious. But she started um, evacuating for on Tuesday for a storm that is <laughs> isn't going to hit until Saturday. So, uh, so yeah, in my market, we have people that are just in panic mode, like super panic mode. And um, so what's happening up in Greenville? Are you, you're kind of experiencing the same thing, though, aren't you? Well, Greenville is taking it. We actually took all of our Greenville County buses down to, uh, down to the coast. Um, and so things have just been weird. Uh, we, have a, we have a big convention center that we're turning into, like, kind of like temporary housing for a lot of people. Supposedly we have, like, anywhere between 300 and 500,000 people coming in. So it's been, wow. it's been pretty crazy. I myself, um, my sister just moved to Georgia, uh, Savannah, and so, of course, they evacuated. So they came down, I guess it was Wednesday night. Um, so ever since then, it, it's, been, it's been rocky in terms of uh, me getting work done. <laughs> so, so, so let's so let's talk about Monday through Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. So what happened Monday through Wednesday? Yeah. So uh, Monday I had an appointment. Um, yeah. I actually called the guy over the weekend and set an appointment for Monday. He was interviewing four agents, me being one of them. Um, one of them, I actually was there when the other agent was leaving. I, I showed up a little early. Um, I waved them on. Uh, <laughs> so I went in there and, and did my appointment, and, and honestly, the appointment—if I could do every appointment in my career like this, I would be—I would probably probably be happy. It, like everything yeah, went go, as man? planned. Yeah, I mean, it, it went yeah, great. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, well, every every question that he he asked, I could answer like on the spot. Um, I answered great, you know, you know asked great questions. Um, really got down to the root of what he was of what he was, you know, wanting, why he was selling, things like that. Um. And uh, at, at the very end, I, I knew he wanted to to list with me, but he he wanted to he wanted to interview two more agents, and he kept on saying that. Yeah. So I, I would circle back and try to close on him. Circle back, try to close on him, and it got to a point where you, you know that silence when when you're in the middle of a sale, and you just yeah you know, they say don't talk because he he, he has no reason to say no now. During the whole uh, meeting, he had his phone going off. It was the same number. He'd look at it. He silenced it. Look at it. Silenced it. Well, so so we're in that silent stage, and the phone goes off again, right in the middle of it. Same number. This this number is called four times. So he's like, yeah. "I got to take this." I'm like, "Crap." Okay, so he takes it. Um, he, he speaks. He speaks. His first language is is, is a different language. So he, so he's speaking in a different language on the phone. And uh, so I step away for about two minutes. He gets off the phone. He he calls his wife over. And he says. We got to go right now. I'm oh like, crap. <laughs> so they they literally they rush out of there. They, they leave quicker than I do. It was crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to get this now um, because obviously he's going to be with the other two agents, and so I'm just going to keep on following up with them. Um, so I texted him, no reply. I emailed him, no reply that same day because I want I wanted to be on top of it. Um, yeah. And later on that night, he ended up calling me. He said, uh, we decided not to go with the other two agents, and uh, we're not going with the one that we first interviewed. So uh, we want to sign paperwork tomorrow. I'm like, sweet. That's cool, okay. man. So, so with four agents, I mean, we hear, I hear this a lot where agents are going, ah, oh, man, they're interviewing three people or they're interviewing four mm -hmm. people or whatever. How do you, what do you think you did that made you stand out amongst those four agents? I, I offered probably the most value they've ever seen. Um, yeah. in, in, ter in terms of everything, in terms of my willingness to actually work for them, in terms of the quality of service that I'm offering, in terms of, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I do a fireman guarantee, which means that if they're not completely satisfied with the service that I'm giving them and we can't find a resolution, I'll let them go. 
because yeah. I, I would rather I would rather have a client that I like than a client that I contend with. So and they they took comfort in that, knowing that they have an option out and that I have to actually work to keep them as a client. So it was just it was a couple things. So cool, man. Did you send them a pre listing package and all that stuff first? Oh uh, yeah, pre listing package. I uh, sent them the net sheet, just like you, you know you taught us in your workshops. So. Oh wow. So okay, so you sent the pre listing package. You sent the net sheet. And did you did you have to do like a formal marketing presentation or anything for them? I printed out everything that was going on in their neighborhood, and uh, before yeah. I went out, I printed out every single MLS um, listing that had either sold or was active or was contingent. I made notes on every single one. So honestly, my 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 comparative analysis presentation was probably about three to five minutes. I ran through the numbers. I said, "This is what is going on in the market. This is what I'm willing to sell your house for." Because this is what makes sense. That's awesome. They said, so you, did, they you, did that, you basically explained an active pricing strategy and told them what their competition was. Yeah, yeah. And there was a uh, we're, we're listed at the same price that another uh, contingent offer is uh, priced at. So same same size house. Oh, that's cool. Um, same price, everything. So. That's cool, man. So what about uh? So you got you got the listing. And um, what about the uh, – you told, told me about another appointment you went on that sounded pretty interesting. Yeah, this, this one's crazy, man. Um, <laughs> this is also <laughs> one that I called uh, last Saturday. We had a, we had a lot of uh, expireds last Saturday. It was, it was the first of the month, um, and I don't think a whole lot of agents were calling. So I, I blew through a lot, of, uh, a lot of expired calls. But I talked to this guy, and uh, he, he's got a very unique property. He's sitting on uh, yeah. a little over 10 acres. He's got a fully stocked pond. He's got he, – he's, he's what you would call an extreme prepper. And uh, <laughs> so it yeah. was an interesting conversation. I mean, we, we, we went from real estate to talking about um, false gold to, <laughs> to what's going to be trading best after the economy collapsed. Um, <laughs> it, it was interesting. But uh, that's, it, that's... It, yeah, it, it's a property that when I went out there, it, it would be very hard to sell, especially the price point he was wanting. So, yeah, what well, uh, you mentioned, he had an appraisal for the property. Yeah, he, he was he was about a hundred thousand dollars over appraisal, and I and I understand that there are a lot of things in that property that he he deems very valuable, and a lot of them are. I mean, he he has uh, EMP proof generators. He's got bunkers underneath his house, um, but. It would have been a very unique property to sell, and it, it like a quarter of, of a percent of buyers would even really consider hassling with that. So, yeah, so he's got the full prepper whole <laughs> yes thing going on. He's looking for the end of the world to come, the end of government. <laughs> <laughs> he said he yeah. said all of his yeah. said all of his neighbors are preppers, and he said we even we even uh, picked out the trees that were going to fall. To, to land across the street so we could seal the, the entrance off. I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny, man. I've had some crazy ones before too. So, so um, with the storm and stuff, you got family that are in town. So that made it a little bit hard to to, yeah. to get there on the phone. And this whole storm's kind of messed everybody up this week. It seems like, or at least everybody in uh in the southeast. So, um, what do you think could you could have done better though that Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Um, well, I think I think Monday was a pretty profitable day. Tuesday, I probably could have called more, and Wednesday, I definitely could have called more. Um, the past couple days, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, I've just kind of been following up with hot leads that I have. Um, not really yeah. cold calling anybody, but I have about I don't know, maybe 20 people that I'm actively following up with, people that I've talked to, even people that I've that I've you know met face to face. Um, that I'm just emailing, calling, and texting, trying to get a hold of them, trying to get some deals done. Yeah. How often are you following up with those people that you've, like, actually met face-to-face -face and talked to them about selling their property? I'd say about once every two weeks because they, they're they not there yet. One of them I know is going to uh, sell with me, but she's not going to sell until about March because she has a, a place being built. Um, another one has uh, some major – Renovations going on right now. Um, he he was also an expire. I actually met him back in June, but he's had all this uh, work being done on his house. It's a it's a higher priced house. It's about seven hundred thousand. Um, oh okay. But yeah. but he wants to yeah, get that know. done first. So. Yeah, I'd keep following up those people, man. That way, when they when they do say, "Hey, you're going to put it on the market," that you're 
you're the top guy on their list, you know, send them some right. stuff, uh, you know, set yourself up a little alert for when something in that price range goes under contract or something in the area goes under contract. That way you can yeah. call them up and go, hey, you just want to let you know house, you know, 123 Main Street just went pending. Um, you know, how soon do you think it's going to start working yep. for you? Uh, do it right now. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You know, a great thing to do is, um, you know, it, in smaller homes where they just want to paint or carpet, I think we talked about this last week, is, you know, suggest making a, you know, credit, you know, credit at, um, yeah. towards closing costs. The, uh, bigger stuff where they're doing a little more, more major renovations, um, you know, I, I've done, I've listed a lot of houses like that, that, uh, you know, they were actually going through some major stuff, replacing kitchen cabinets. And we, what we did was we made a list. We said, hey, well, why don't we get it on the market right now? We can make a list of everything you're going to do, and we'll just take pictures of the area, areas that are not, you know, not being renovated. So I've, d- I've done that before, too, man. It's okay. Just, it's yeah. to help you get something on the market, market quicker. So the listing yeah, this you got, one guy in particular, he's uh, he, he's up against a, a pretty high competition. It's it's a very nice area. I mean, half the houses in in there have elevators. They're, they're condos, they're three story condos, um, yeah, townhomes. So it, it's 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 going to be difficult for him to compete if he's not up to par with a lot of the other um, his neighbors. So of course, yeah. You know, one thing I've did I've done too before with like a little bit nicer homes. Is, you know, mm-hmm. people would say, hey, we got to do all this stuff. And, um, you know, you might want to, if there's other ones on the market, or even, even better, if there's one that's pending that's on the market that's for about the same price they're looking for, you know, it never hurts to go, hey, look, uh, would you guys like to take a look at a couple of the ones you're going to be competing with? Um, you know, physically go over there and look, you know, at the ones that they're competing with so they can see, like, hey, you know, Maybe that yeah. one doesn't have the hardwood floors they thought, or maybe it didn't have the granite countertops like they thought it did. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll go in three, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar homes here, and you know, it's got they got some like countertops, they got uh, they got laminate flooring, yeah. you know, and you're you're walking in and you're going, wow, you know, but the pictures look amazing, you know. Yep. So. Uh, Sometimes they look a little different when you actually walk through the door, and sometimes they realize that the upgrades they're trying to make aren't really good enough. You know what I mean? Maybe they need yeah. to step up what they're planning to do, especially if they're going to spend the money on, you know, they're going to spend the money on countertops. You know, what's another two or three thousand dollars when they're trying to get seven hundred thousand for a house? You know, so um, you know, just a suggestion. So the so the two appointments you went on, where did they where did they come from? Were they expired? Red X expires, man. I mean, it's Red gold. Expires. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's awesome, man. I tell people, you know, if you call Red X and tell them Jason Morris sent you, they waive the setup fees and they get some package deals and stuff. Yeah. So, um, by the way, I, I'm not. I, I don't get paid by Red X to say that. I wish I did. I. I <laughs> <laughs> that's just, it's just from my experience. Yeah, you're but, actually. But if Red, Red X wants Red to pay me, I, I won't complain. <laughs> you're actually using Red X, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, cool, man. All right, so did you call any for sale owners this week? Um, I followed up with some for sale owners. I didn't call any new ones. Um, yeah. But I should get into that. <laughs> yeah, you know what, man? you got to start making yourself do it. A lot of people get intimidated by for sale owners. But, um, yep. man, for sale owners, like when you get really good at them, I'll tell you, that's where most of my listings come from that are that are not from my sphere of influence and stuff. Man, right. for sub owners, I am just really good at these people. You know, I've just, you know, just developed a, a talent for anticipating their, their problems and their, their pain points. And, um, man, they, they're excited about people coming to, to look at their house. So they're easy to set appointments with. And man, when you show up, when you send over your pre-listing package, you send over your net sheet showing them how they're going to net what they, um, what they're wanting to get, um, Man, they're they're easy once you show up. You explain to them how you're going to get that price. You lay out the active pricing strategy. I mean, dude, it's an it's an easy appointment, or at least I think they are. Man, I encourage they you. They are. I mean, I mean I would, pre- uh, previews are very easy to get. Um, I, and I'm kind of up in the air on how to present it to them because I I don't want them to think I'm just coming to to look at their house or I'm coming because I quote unquote have a buyer. Um, 
uh, see, I, I, I kind of want them to know that I'm, I'm there to look. Uh, I'm, I'm here to help you. <laughs> I'm oh, here yeah, to, to possibly what? list your home. <laughs> you know what? Follow my script and do that. Go through the same process. Hey, this is Jason Morris. This is Jason Morris with EXP Realty. I'm calling you about your house for sale. You know, um, how much will you take for it? You know, how soon do you want to sell it? You know, what kind of shapes it in? And you know, look up comparables and stuff while you're. You're asking them questions about the house. You know, how old is the roof? You know, is the inside in good shape? How old is the hot water heater? How old is the HVAC? You know, how much land is it on? You know, ask them questions about it in details while you're pulling up comparables so you can kind of ballpark the price. And then, um, you know, the question is, hey, guys, uh, or the my, my closing thing is, hey, guys, I can get you $100,000 for it or whatever price they tell you. Hey guys, I can get you a hundred thousand dollars for it you know, after my fees and stuff are paid. Um, I can sell your house. I'd like to look at it Tuesday at two o'clock. You always state the time you want to look at it because because this is this is the truth. Your time is more valuable than theirs. Once you yep. say a question like, "Oh, what time's good for you?" or "I'm available anytime after twelve on Friday," you're basically saying. Your time isn't that valuable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, um, or I have nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing going on. Nobody wants to go to the doctor that has no patients. You know what I mean? Nobody yeah, wants exactly. to go to the attorney that doesn't represent any clients, and nobody wants to use the realtor that that's not selling houses. You know? So, um, <laughs> so I mean, you know, always dictate the time that you want to see the house, and follow the same process, man. The Send out the pre-listing package. Send out the net sheet. Um, you know, send out the paperwork. It's all highlighted up so they can see it beforehand. I mean, that way when you get to the house, there's no question about it. Go through the same process. You know, walk around the, walk through the house with them. Get them to give you the tour. You know, comment on anything. Ask questions. Um, ask questions that reinforce the answers they've already given you. You know, um, you know, on the phone if they tell you what their motivating thing was, why they're wanting to sell, and how quick they're wanting to sell. Ask them about it. Hey, man, you said you're moving for for a job. You got to when you when do you start the job? When do you have to be there? Oh, okay, so you guys only have 30 days for you need to sell. What's going to happen if you're paying? You know, if it's not sold before then. Um, yeah. You know, ask them questions like that. Those are painful questions. You know, because most people, I mean, most people today, man, they can't afford. They can't afford to rent a place where they're moving and pay the mortgage on the place they're living in currently, you know. So um, look for the look for those pain points with them. Then say, hey guys, you know, I always do a lot of research before I meet somebody at their house. You know, I take all these appointments very seriously. I'd like to show you the information I found, and you know, can we sit at your kitchen table? That's my spot. You know, I feel comfortable there. I can spread out all my stuff. You know, if you're comfortable sitting on the couch, yeah. sit on the couch. But I always do the kitchen table. And um, you know, tell them what your act, tell them what the active pricing strategy is. You know, go through the comps just like you did with this other listing uh, presentation, and then uh, pull out the net sheet. You know, go through that middle column where you want it priced, and circle their net, and say, "Hey guys, will this work for you? Are you ready for me to start working for you?" Pull out the listing Absolutely. paperwork, go down through it too, man. It's it's really that easy. I mean. And, and, and one thing that I know is you got to make sure you keep that paperwork as short as possible. I was able to go through all the paperwork with them in about 20 minutes. Oh, which, yeah. Which yeah. was it, it's probably the fastest I've ever done it. But everything in the listing presentation was a synopsis. Everything. Yeah, was. that's it. And I, I remember that's listing it. presentations I used to do, and it took me 45, 50 minutes to go through the, all the paperwork. It was, And I could just see it in my in, in my hope to be seller's eye, like, when is this going to end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You see their eyes rolling back in their head. You know what, man, I feel like the the quicker I go through it, give a thorough explanation, but go through it quickly, that synopsis, you know, nobody wants you to read all the legal shit to them, and, right. you know, it's boring. Honestly, there's some sections in there that are scary as hell. You know, they're talking about how we can sue you if we don't get paid. We're talking about the sex offender list that, yep. that honestly, um, if there's a sex offender living down the street, there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, and honestly, the seller doesn't care if a sex offender lives there. He's trying to sell the place. Um, <laughs> so that paragraph right, is, um, right. seems crazy that it's in there. But, you know, the state provides us those forms and all that. 
But um, but yeah, man, go down through the same. It's the same process that you do. You just did with that expired listing, except for the for sale by owner. There, um, they they haven't been. You know, a lot of them haven't actually expired yet, so they they don't right. have ten, fifteen agents calling them. You know, the day they expired or the morning they expired, or fifty agents calling them the morning they expired. Uh, honestly, man, for me they're easy. And I mean, even if you're pulling up like Craigslist. And you know Zillow making calls from there. There's, there isn't near as many people calling as what you think there is, man. I, I think you should you should definitely add for sale by owners to your call list. Absolutely, I I, I got to get on uh, Craigslist more. I, I know there's gold in there. I just haven't haven't delved into it yet. Oh yeah, dude, I make money off Craigslist. It, it's kind yeah. of insane for it to be free. I make money <laughs> off Craigslist. So, so man, what's your uh, what's your plan for next week? Uh, well, hopefully I can get back on track. Um, I'm still going to try to set an appointment this week. I still have through Sunday. Um, but next week, man, it seems like I, it seems like I'm averaging anywhere between maybe three and four listings, or three and four appointments. But I, I think I can do better. Um, I just gotta I just gotta put my head down and get to work. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say five or seven appointments. Cool, man. Yeah, you know, in these appointments, you know, we can talk about them. We can kind of dissect them a little bit and try to figure out what happened, you know, when you don't get the listing appointment. But a lot yeah. of it's just, man, the more you go on, the more comfortable you're going to be in front of people, and the more comfortable you're going to be asking the hard questions like, hey, what happens if you don't sell it? What happens if Absolutely. you have to move for your job and it's not sold? You know, and, um, you know, start start looking at those. And as you go on them, too, you're going to get – you're going to become a better question at asker you know what i mean yes yes Absolutely. and that's primary. well my I mean, goal I do. yeah my goal is uh january to have seven pending pending that's under cool. contract um hopefully hopefully clear close um because i, I want to start i want to start january out very strong and that that starts now so, so so your goal for the year between now and january was how many uh, i wanted to get 15 you get 15 so right now you've gotten you've got one right i've got one Yep. So you got 15, and 15 more 15 to go. would be about one a week. So, yep. so we've got we got 11 weeks right now. 11 weeks to go. Is that right? Is is that it? Oh, we got 11 weeks, Damn. man. Yeah, yeah. You got to get uh, you got to pick it up, man. You got to get two some weeks. Yep. So we got 11 oh, yeah. weeks to go, man. Add four sale owners though, and you're going to notice like a lot of um, you're going to start noticing a lot of um. A lot less resistance on some of your questions and appointment stuff, though. Yeah, absolutely. You don't be scared of any of them, man. Well, man, it was a good week. You know, it was uh, you had a you know a great week, say in the circumstances and the storm and the weather and stuff we've been experiencing in the southeast. So, um, cool, man. So, uh, is there anything else you want to say or talk about? Anything you learned this week? Uh, yeah, I mean, if if, if you want to give me a, a call or a, a text message, uh, my number is eight six four three five four nine one zero zero. I'm always looking to network with people. Um, but yeah, y'all get to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, All man. right, Jason. Thanks.